worship God and bow before the God who made us. For he is the Lord our God. Cry out with joy to God all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. O oh, come, let us worship God and bow before the God who made us. For he is the Lord our God. Because of the greatness of your strength, your enemies fawn upon you. Before you all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name. O oh, come, let us worship God and bow before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, come, let us worship God, and bow before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. Good morning, and welcome to our celebration of the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our tabernacle flowers are donated by Sherry Hatherley in memory of Gerald and Lois Knupp. This mass is being offered for Tom Bump. Our opening song is There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Please stand. Which is more 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With great joy as we come again to this holy altar to offer ourselves in sacrifice to the Lord, and to receive His precious body and blood, life-giving, sustaining food. Let us call to mind our sins, so we may prepare our hearts to celebrate worthily these holy sacraments. Let us pray. I confess, confess to, to Almighty God. God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the help of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise, then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in our second reading, we get a little window into what made St. Paul one of the greatest evangelists in the history of the church, right? He was this missionary disciple who was unafraid to approach any community. He would go into any town and he would proclaim Christ crucified. And we get a little window into what makes him so courageous, what makes him um, such a prolific evangelist, so that we can learn and follow suit. So there are three things if we're going to be a really, really good evangelist, if we're going to be able to preach Christ and draw souls to him. And the first is... The purpose. Why why in the world, what would motivate St. Paul to go out, to leave his regular life, and to preach Christ? Well, first and foremost, it was a radical encounter with the Lord. It was love. More than anything else, St. Paul had fallen in love with the Lord. He tells us, why does he preach the gospel? It's not to boast. It's not to uh, make a show of himself. It's not for any selfish profit. He doesn't charge for the gospel. He offers the gospel free of charge. But it's born out of love. St. Paul has this friendship with Christ that was created at his conversion that he appreciates. He recognizes all the good things that God has done for him. He's received them freely, and freely he wants to return, to return them. So first and foremost, he has this relationship of love with the Lord that motivates him to the center of his life, more than anything else. So too, we need that. If we're going to be good evangelists, if we're going to be convincing witnesses to the gospel, we need that relationship of love with our Lord first and foremost above anything else. The second is similar. St. Paul loves humanity. St. Paul loves his brothers and sisters. We have to cultivate in ourselves this same love. What drove him to the ends of the earth, all the way to Rome and ultimately to death, was love of souls. Wanting these good things that he had experienced, this relationship with the Lord, for every single person he encountered. This is what drives him. And the third thing is his tremendous courage. This is what we need as well. You and I need to be courageous witnesses to the gospel. And we hear hear him say it. To the weak, I became weak to overcome the weak. I made it myself a slave in regard to all, so as to win over as many as possible. Sometimes we aren't courageous enough 
to seem weak. Sometimes we aren't courageous enough to be a slave of the gospel. To be a true and authentic disciple of Jesus Christ means embracing our weakness, embracing our brokenness, so that we can reveal to the world our Savior's power. To be a real and authentic and credible witness to the gospel, we have to recognize ourselves as sinners and the Lord as our Savior. Too often we think of ourselves and, and the culture reminds us, everyone's okay, I'm okay, you're okay, we don't have to worry. But today we take St. Paul's admonition and unless we're able to embrace our weakness, unless we're able to, to come from our high horses, to come down and meet people and empathize with their weakness, how are we to be effective ministers of the gospel? So this is St. Paul's threefold secret. Love Jesus above all else. Love your neighbor so much so that you're willing to risk, to risk seeming weak, to risk seeming lowly, to reach out to them. And if you must, become all things to all people, just as, as uh, St. Paul did, to save at least some. And why does he do it? So that he might have a share in this gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, which means life eternal. The beautiful gifts that we have here, the family of the church receiving our Lord body and blood in the Eucharist sustains us. We want those good things. We want those gifts for everyone. So today, we hear this call, we hear this commission to be evangelists, to go out courageously and spread the good news. This week also marks the announcement weekend for the annual Catholic Appeal. So we know that once a year, the Archbishop takes up a, a collection that sustains the ministries of the archdiocese beyond the parishes. And so I have a letter that I'll read from him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the theme of this year's annual Catholic appeal is I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. What we've experienced in this past year is not unlike the plight of Job, which we hear about in our first reading today. Though all of hell was unleashed on Job, he refused to curse God. He remained faithful. In today's reading, we hear Job tempted to despair, doubtful that happiness will ever return, and feeling that life is simply a drudgery. I am sure that many of us have identified with these feelings throughout the past year. The isolation we have felt, the uncertainty of health and security, the loss of loved ones, the political and cultural turmoil, and even the suspension of the consolation of the sacraments have driven even the most faithful among us to question why we undergo such miseries. However, we do not despair. We turn to the Lord in time of trouble. Even in tribulation, the Lord is faithful. We know the Lord has sustained his church through difficulties generation after generation. And no matter the circumstances, the church has come through such tests stronger than before, just like Job. The light of faith alive in our hearts and communities provides hope for us even in the darkest times. We, as a people of faith, cling to hope and are constantly reminded of God's goodness. One such reminder is the amazing generosity of the people of the Archdiocese during last year's annual Catholic Appeal. It is surely a sign of strong faith that as your own difficulties increased, your generosity increased as well. As parishes and diocesan ministries sought creative ways to continue to proclaim the gospel, your generosity ensured that the great gift of our faith which has been freely given to us, could continue to be spread throughout the diocese. The circumstances of this year have also taught us that our efforts to evangelize are more urgent than ever. Your yearly gift to the annual Catholic Appeal supports some of the most important works of our church, including forming new priests and deacons, making missionary disciples on college campuses, catechizing youth and young adults in the richness of the faith, strengthening marriages and families, standing up for life from conception to natural death, educating and raising up leaders and spiritual directors, and invigorating Hispanic ministries. There is so much good to be done in our diocese. It is much like our Lord in today's gospel. After preaching and healing many people, the Lord seeks a moment of rest and prayer when his disciples find him and say, everyone is looking for you. All were turning to him in their time of trouble. And the Lord responds, for this purpose have I come. The Lord doesn't rest 
and neither shall we. Let us continue to storm heaven with our prayers that the power of the gospel may permeate our archdiocese. May we never get tired of proclaiming the love of Christ in season and out of season. I ask you once again, open your hearts to the many important ministries sustained through the annual Catholic appeal. Partner with me to ensure the vitality and vibrancy of the gospel messages proclaimed freely and abundantly in the year to come. To watch the annual Catholic appeal video or learn more about how your gift will impact your parish and your diocese, visit archokc.org appeal. I ask you to please take home the information provided after Mass and prayerfully consider your gift to this year's annual Catholic appeal. Thank you for your continued generosity and know of my prayers for you. Sincerely yours in Christ, Most Reverend Paul Coakley, Archbishop of Oklahoma City. So we know this appeal is very important um, for the ministry, the work of our diocese, and our parish is notoriously generous, right? So they always set our goal really high, and we always beat it. I don't know how. You guys just get more and more generous every year. We know it's important to our parish because so much of uh, the, the ministries that the appeal supports are sustained by our parish. So the, the biggest budget item is um, the, the seminarians. We have four seminarians from our parish. They average about 50 grand a year for, to educate them. That adds up, right? What about the, the deacon candidates? I'm not exactly sure how expensive they are, but they add up too. We've got four of them, right? So we've got um, many ministries, marriage and family ministries that are supported through our, this archdiocesan appeal. You know, I'm the, the chaplain at the University of Central Oklahoma. Our budget is supported mostly through the annual Catholic appeal. And so on behalf of the students at UCO, thank you for your generosity. I'm also chaplain at Mount St. Mary High School. Our Catholic high schools are supported through the generosity of the annual Catholic appeal. So on behalf of my Mount students, thank you for your generosity. Um, but just prayerfully consider between this week and next week what the Lord might be calling you to give to sustain these ministries uh, and to, to help the Archbishop continue to spread the gospel message through our diocese. But it's not just about writing a check, right? That's great. Remember the first part of the homily, we said, you've got to be the evangelist. You've got to be the missionary disciples. Um, you've got to get out there and make some trouble for us. Pray for vocations. So we need even more money to send our seminarians. Pray for vocations to the diaconate. So we need even more money for deacon formation. Pray that the college students flood the Newman Center so that all of a sudden we've got this big issue. Pray that our Catholic schools are strong so that we need those dollars to be able to support these ministries. Thank you for your, your generosity and consideration in this and get out there and evangelize. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we glorify and praise your holy name. Hear the prayers that we offer you this day. 
Our response this morning will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Paul, and all the leaders of the church, that they may lead with courage, commitment, and deep faith in Jesus, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That civil authorities would dedicate themselves to servant leadership and what is good for those they serve, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis's February intention, that women who are victims of violence may be protected by society and have their sufferings considered and heeded by all, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our catechumens and candidates grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and be fully prepared to enter into the church at Easter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, we pray especially for Marcia Bowl, mother-in-law of Jane Bowl, mother of Cindy and Chris, Pat Bug, mother of Stephen Bug, Mary Kathleen Villasenor, wife of Ed Villasenor, and Ben Stefanik. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus, who with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with all the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Broken heart, through grief and disbelief, God still. Re- 
Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. A few quick announcements. You may have noticed St. Joseph uh, close to the altar here and thought, that's weird, where'd St. Joseph come from? Well, Pope Francis has declared 2021 as the year of St. Joseph. So this year, St. Joseph we take as our patron. St. Joseph, guardian of the Holy Family, is also the patron saint of the Universal Church and patron saint of fathers. So especially this year, We're going to have some extra devotions to St. Joseph. We're going to entrust our parish and our families to St. Joseph. And so um, his statue is here with some candles if you wish to to pray for your family, for for friends, for um, fathers. St. Joseph is your guy, and we'll venerate him especially this year. So he's right here close to us. Also, you probably noticed the Knights of Columbus are continuing their Change for Life collection. They're taking your spare change, and this goes towards... Um, providing ultrasounds for, for risk pregnancies, right, for at-risk pregnancies, and so um, saves lives. So if you have some extra change in your pocket, be sure and drop it in the Change for Life bucket. Um, thank you. Let's see, I think that's it for this. There are these 
uh, annual appeal envelopes at the entrances. Um, if you want to take one and prayerfully consider a gift to the annual Catholic appeal, or you can always go online to archokc.org slash appeal. Thanks for your generosity in everything you do. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.